Ahmet Feyzi's defense to Afyon criminal court. Judges of the court, is it not the duty and right of a believer to serve the Quran and the Prophet upon whom the blessings and peace by meeting with a scholar of religion, reading and writing out his books about the truth of religion and hastening to the assistance of his co-religionists? Is there any law prohibiting us from the service of religion? Is it a crime to criticize certain aspects of the atheistic immoral currents of our times? We are purely a body of religiously minded people which has no connection whatsoever with politics or government. To think well of someone and consider him worthy is a personal opinion that may be held by anyone. We know Bedu Zaman to be the most elevated scholar of religion of our times. We know him to be someone who follows reality and who expresses and explains the truths of religion without toting to anyone. We call him a Mujahid because of his service to religion and relying on the Quran's unshakable truths, he is undertaking the defense of our country against the currents of immorality and disbelief which threaten it. In a country in which freedom of religion and conscience are the rule, we cannot be held guilty of an offense because of the views we hold in the light of our consciences. Therefore, we are not obliged to give account to anyone. As for the matter of the persons foretold in Hadith to come at the end of time, we did not fabricate this. They have their origin in religion. In a number of Hadiths, God's Messenger, upon whom be blessings and peace, said that the life of his community would not exceed 1500 years. The major historical events up to that time which would have the greatest significance for the life of his community and for the life of the world, he gave news of calling them the signs of the end of the world. He drew the attention of the Muslim Ummah to their evil. He said that those who were heedless and ignorant of these evils would meet with everlasting misery and loss. There are innumerable religious proofs of this. We believe in God, His Messenger, and the Quran. So as the result of this belief and belief in the Messenger's veracity, should we not strive to save ourselves from everlasting perdition? Should we not see what is happening around us, wondering how those perilous times come? Don't let it be us who are the generation that falls prey to those dangers, should we not point out how they may be applied to extend religious truths? If we disregard the positive evidences before us and the proven scholarly truths which take us to the divine existence and supposing the irreligion of Europe to be the greatest means of civilization and sole mark of knowledge, we abandon our religion who will save us from eternal perdition? Should we not think of this? Would a person of this mind who recognizes nothing superior to the Quran and its truths throw himself into everlasting perdition out of fear of temporary punishments? Or would he attach any worth to transcend values? Would he give up his duty of serving God and his messenger and his religion? These then are the three factors trying us to Bedu Zaman. Is there any other source of religion that can silence the pre-eternal needs of our spirits? The prosecutor recommends to us the thousands of Arabic books which fill the libraries but do not interpret the spirit of today. He himself and those who think like him may not like the compendium of knowledge, treasury of freedom, and elevated reality called the Risale Nur and they may criticize it. That is a matter for themselves, but they may not interfere in our preferring this or that work or our attaching value to them. We like the Risale Nur, and we know it to be a true, unhypocritical book on religion and a Quranic commentary. Values and value judgments are questions of conscience. No one can interfere in them. Yes, we agree that the Risale Nur's author always teaches pure truth. The fact that he does not accept this does not shake our opinion. 
Moreover, our opinion is based not on his wonder working in the physical realm, but on the wonders of his knowledge, the extraordinary manifestations of which we have observed in his teachings with the Risale Nur, which challenge all the worlds of knowledge. Can you show us a second Bedu Zaman who, although his official period of study was no more than three months, spread such a brilliant light of knowledge and with the wonders of his learning displayed a logic so advanced in the ultimate questions of science that they left even the loftiest thinkers in amazement and in a language he learned only in the second part of his life had such a captivating style of exposition and such a gripping ardor who overflows with love and passion and is exuberant like a sea of bliss, a treasury of divine knowledge, an ocean of wisdom. Do you consider it excessive that we consider to be a master the monument of virtue and light who shows not the slightest inclination towards the pomp of fleeting, superficial ostentation, nor stoops to even the smallest benefit or pleasure, nor attaches any value to anyone who falls at the feet of fleeting faith, who awaits nothing from anyone, nor asks for it, and accepts nothing offered to him, who displaying the best example of the purest chastity, and enduring patiently, with forbearance, every sort of deprivation, has dedicated himself to the truth, and to making down the lights of the Qur'an and knowledge of Muhammad upon him blessings and peace, and out of the abundance of his compassion weeps at the suffering of the country and nation, and who never gives up his work, which is for the happiness of those around him, despite all the betrayals he has suffered, and disregarding his own old age and aloneness, strives and battles with selfless, divine exertion to save people from the pits of ignorance and whirlpool of denial. In addition to the wonders of his knowledge described above, he is worthy of being known and followed as an example of perfection and virtue because of this matchless self-sacrifice, self-sufficiency, and masterpiece of chastity and moderation which he has shown at this time when moral values have been lost. That is how we look on Bedu Zaman and his works. Is it solely because of our attachment to him which arises from our belief and our belief in the severe rebukes and reprimands of the Quran and Muhammad upon whom be blessings and peace concerning unbelief and morality that he has involved us in politics which are deemed fleeting filth? Or can it be called corruption to inform about God and his messenger, the truth and the Quran, some of the sons of our compatriots who for 25 years have been unable to learn the truths of religion and are heading for certain perdition in order to save them from everlasting extinction and to reform their unsullied spirits and innocent consciences? Judges of the court, we are in no way involved in politics. We know that for those like us who are not versed in politics, politics is a way beset with a thousand and one perils, dangers and responsibilities. In any event, we attach no importance to fleeting externals. We only look to the good face of the world which takes us to divine pleasure. We therefore vehemently reject the charge that we pursue politics or contest the concepts of the state. If there had been any such intention, there would have been some small manifestation of it in 25 years. Yes, we have a negative front, a side which rebukes, turned to immorality and unbelief. This arises only from belief and our necessarily joining in the Qur'an's severe expressions and comprehensive warnings about these things. If these reasons and this sincere, straightforward style of exposition do not convince you, sentence us to whatever sort of punishment you please. But do not forget that Jesus, peace be upon him, who today has 600 million followers, was sentenced to death like a common thief by the authorities of his time only because his heart beat for mankind's happiness and he bore the trust of delivering the message. Having spoken out freely, we shall be proud to face our conviction. With the cry of, 
For us, God suffices, and He is the best disposer of affairs. We open our hands to the court of the dispenser of needs. Prisoner, Ortaklar Bucağlı Ahmet Feyzi Kul, Afyon Prison Ceylan's Defense To Afyon Criminal Court Making a mountain out of a mulhem because of my service to my master and the Risale-i of which I am proud, the prosecution portrays me as a permanent diplomat or cunning plotter. In reply to his apportioning me a large share of the imaginary crime with which the risale is charged, I say this. I am closely attached to my master, Bediüzzaman, from whom by reading his works on religion, belief and morality, I have profited to such an extent that I would readily sacrifice my life for his sake. However, my attachment is not as the prosecution said, harmful for the country and nation in order to incite the people against the state, it is rather an unsevierable attachment on the way of saving myself from the eternal annihilation of the grave from which no one can escape and saving the belief of my brothers in religion which, like me, they are in need of saving in these perilous times, correcting their conduct and becoming useful members of the nation and country. I am one of those close to him. From time to time, for four years, I have proudly attended on him. During this time, I have witnessed nothing other than total virtue. I have not once heard him say a single word about his being the Mahdi or the regenerator of religion. More than a hundred thousand copies of the risale Nur and hundreds of thousands of pure intentioned risale Nur students who have saved their belief by reading its treatises can testify that he is the very epitome of humility. My blessed master considers himself to be a Risalinur student like us. This is what he claims. This may be seen easily in many of his letters which you have in your possession and especially in the treatise on sincerity which is included in the staff of Moses collection Asai Musa. He repeatedly says in his letters Enduring truths like the sun or diamonds cannot be constructed on transcendent persons, and transcendent persons cannot lay claim to those precious truths. So, to accuse him of boasting and of claiming to be the Mahdi and regenerator of religion is not something anyone of intelligence would do. For, if you read carefully and fairly all his treatises and letters, you will form the certain conviction that the like of this profoundly learned scholar of the times has not been encountered for centuries. He is a savior of belief, the like of whom will not be encountered, who at a time the red sparks of communism are licking the eaves of our houses is a patriot far more useful and productive for the country and nation than an army. I am regretful that I was not earlier the student of such a work and the esteemed master who wrote it. Respect the judges of the court. With the idea of performing a sacred service for the nation, so that, like me, the sons of this land might profit from the risale whose endless benefits I myself had experienced, I had printed a guide for youth in Eskshire. I ask you, how is it that, while service of the risale which is a true and irrefutable Quranic commentary and thus of belief of an unfortunate like myself should have met with praise and appreciation and encouragement we received the severe treatment? Is it not contrary to justice? I request of your just court that you give the decision for the risale freedom, for it is the sustenance of our spirits, means of our salvation and key to our eternal happiness. If the circumstances, some of which I have mentioned and enumerated above, constitute a crime in your view, I shall accept with total resignation the harshest penalty you can inflict. Prisoner, Emir Dağlı Ceylan Çalışkan, Afyon Prison Mustafa Osman's Defense To Afyon Criminal Court I say in reply to the matters which have been put forward as offenses, that I took part in the imaginary activities against the regime reputedly perpetrated by Bediüzzaman Said Nursi, who 
who is accused of founding a secret society and by exploiting religious feelings of being engaged in activities that might breach state security. 1. Yes, like many Risale-Nur students, I began to collect the treatises of the Risale-Nur and to read them with the intention of receiving a civilized religious education and learning Quranic conduct which is a national characteristic and is worthy of true Turkism and Islam and an historical honor and virtue of ours. I intended to become a useful member of the country and nation and defend it against the effects of foreign ideologies. How could it be considered an offense at a time wise and immorality have trampled the honor and mode of action of our forefathers which found fame in history and poisoned the life of society and have spelled into the streets to the extent of discussing even the immoral, alarming public opinion so that it is gossiped about in our home and this grievous situation which gives rise to criticism in the form of news about the moral police and of various other subjects in the newspapers and magazines which are the tone of public opinion is repeatedly spreading and quite simply becoming general to read the Risale-Nur collection at such a time which saved me as it saves all Muslims who read it and to give it to my compatriots when they insistently asked for it who knew and heard that I read these works so that it could rectify their morals too and so to save through the Risale-Nur and its effective teachings these people who had lost their moorings and were becoming harmful for the country and nation and to give it to them to read since it would assist them to become useful to humanity. How could this be considered an offense? It is the luminous, effective weapon of Bedu Zaman in his secret, moral struggle which is worthy of praise and appreciation. With his effective teachings about religion, he is a mujahid fighting against the dangerous red plague of communism which is spreading like an epidemic even in our country and makes the whole world tremble. How could it be considered a crime for myself to have given these treatises to people when they have thus in 20 years transformed into useful members of the country and nation 20,000 people and probably more? And how could charges be made against its respected author in the same way? I ask your consciences. 2. The Hadith which the prosecution stated was false and therefore unscholarly is said to be sound in the books of Hadith. So, having been accepted by the scholars of Hadith and the fact that the leading Istanbul scholars both before the constitutional revolution and during it accepted Bedu Zaman's interpretations and replies which are now found in the fifth ray to the questions they asked of him in connection with the questions asked of them by the Japanese and the Anglican Church and those prominent scholars did not object to his replies establishes definitely that the Hadith is sound. Moreover, the truths of not a part of the risale Nur but of all of it are so powerful that no true Islamic scholar could object to them so that foremost the Directorate of Religious Affairs and true scholars throughout the country since the constitutional period have been compelled to accept and respect them. The objections of one or two individuals who are known as scholars but who are bereft of true knowledge do not refute those truths and powerful proofs. They are merely ridiculous. Is it a betrayal of the regime to write a letter of thanks to the author of the risale Nur? because one is captivated by the truths of the Qur'an and believe it contains the spiritual and material benefits of which have become clear and which are studied all over the country by every class of person in order to save their eternal lives from extinction and from which thousands of compatriots have profited and so are eternally indebted to their esteemed author since he has saved their belief. Is it a betrayal? relying on the undeniable truths stated by the Hadith which is deemed to constitute an offense to consider certain acts and works to have appeared in this country which are referred to by the Hadith 
and supposing it to be thus, relying on the statements of numerous Islamic scholars to see it as the victory of the Quran, which will lead to the repairing of certain errors, and to be pleased at this, and to privately put this view to a master from whose works one has received effulgence, and to hope that the country and nation will not fall into anarchy, and thus into the embrace of the red peril which causes the whole world to tremble, is this a betrayal of the regime? Is it to malign the reforms? And although several courts of law have acquitted that scholar who is utterly deserving of commendation and appreciation, and although he is very elderly, a recluse, and has no one to charge him with the same matters, arrest him, put him into solitary confinement, and send him to trial, and for us too, to consider to be a crime these scholarly views of ours, and our working to save our belief, and to put this forward as evidence of our supposed breaching of state security, is the just decision of which conscience? I ask this of your court, and leave it to your consciences. 3. The charge of carrying Bediuzaman's picture as though it were something sacred, and collecting his letters, and corresponding with him. To carry not a simple picture, but one decorated in gold and jewels of the universal scholar and esteemed author who through his works has saved my special life and eternal life from extinction and allows me to experience the pleasure and happiness of physical life and who has saved the belief of thousands like me and to send him letters and congratulate him and to get to know others who love him is my right as it is for all members of humanity. I do not suppose this right of mine to constitute a crime, and finally, I say, as the police of two provinces and numerous towns can testify in order to be able to serve this country, nation, and humanity, for long years the Risalinur students have saved themselves through the Risalinur from being aimless and have been the means of saving others. Although the patriotic service they have performed for this country and its government has in reality been greater than a police force of thousands and is worthy of recognition and appreciation, it has been misinterpreted and we have been arrested as though deliberately on behalf of some foreign power. All our work and businesses have gone to wreck and ruin and our wretched families and children have been left weeping and destitute. Which laws of democracy does this confirm to? Which just decisions of which just judges? I request from your respected court, which executes justice in the name of the just Turkish nation and its high assembly, that this works, the numerous benefits and advantages of which are obvious and undeniable, are left free and that we are acquitted. Prisoner Safranbolulu Mustafa Osman, Afyon Prison. Hıfzı Bayram's Defense to Afyon Criminal Court. I am charged with reading some of the works which teach the truths of the Quran and belief and are of great benefit for the nation and country of the Islamic scholar Bediüz Zaman who is accused of attempting to breach state security by exploiting religious feelings and with obtaining and giving or request to a number of acquaintances some of his treatises from which I had greatly benefited in respect of belief and religion and which had led me to acquire Quranic manners in the hope that it would be for their good and they would profit from his teachings about belief and religious and moral instruction and national characteristic. In addition, on the pretext of a number of acquaintances sending letters of a friendly or scholarly nature to my address, it is alleged that I am a partner in the crime of the above mentioned. I object as follows to these matters with which I have been charged. 1. I did not read the Risale Nur which has previously been tried and acquitted and returned to its author and has been praised and recommended by the country's religious scholars with any idea of causing trouble in the way insisted on by the prosecution. 
I saw every part of it to be nothing but an important Quranic commentary which effectively teaches Islam and gives religious instruction the way to make people virtuous and advance morally and to save nations from falling into the abyss. Since this is the case, I do not suppose that to read this with the intention of study or maintaining my religion and belief and to give them to others and to obtain them for others constitutes a crime. For nowhere at all has any incident harmful to the country and nation in which Risalinur students have taken part been witnessed or recorded by the police. In addition, it is totally false to say they study and read them secretly and to arouse doubts about a secret society. Because whether scholarly or political, the Risalinur students have no connection with any society, secret or open. In fact, several years ago, the same charges were made against Bediu Zaman and many others and they were sent for trial in Denizli criminal court and although all the parts of the Risalinur were scrutinized in the closest detail, they were all acquitted. I do not know the extent to which the imperatives of justice demand putting forward as evidence for a serious crime such as breaching state security and betrayal of the regime reading a work which itself and whose author have been acquitted and giving it to others to read, so I refer it to your consciences. 2. Among the charges was my being sent while under arrest, a treatise by someone I do not know from Bayezid. I have not seen this treatise. I am uninformed about what it contains. If it is the Risale Nur, I accept it. You ask and I shall reply. Only I learned that the prosecutor mentions the Mehdi in the indictment and my master is innocent of all such accusations. Just as I have never heard him mention such a thing, so I have not seen it in any of his works. Moreover, at every opportunity he has forbidden his students to venerate him, exalt him or accord him and rank and he has rebuked those who have written him such letters. We have always known him to be an important scholar who seeks no rank or position and to be a precise and exacting hoja. Prisoner Hufsu Bayram